Okay, so in this lecture now I want to go on and practice some of the conformational analysis skills that we learned in the previous videos, um, including drawing and understanding Newman projections. Uh, so consider this meso compound um, of 3,4-dichlorohexane. Right, it's six carbons long, but we are going to focus here on and the central carbon carbon bond. You can call this carbon three and the other carbon, carbon four. And first I will draw in uh, the implicit hydrogens, right? Because carbon three already has two planar lines and one dash, the hydrogen will be a wedge coming out of the page. And carbon four already has a wedge and two lines bound to it. So the hydrogen there will be a dash coming into the page. So here we're asked to draw two different conformations or two Newman projections, the least stable conformation with respect to the C3, C4 bond and the most stable conformation. Um, so let's first think about what the least stable conformation will look like. This will be an eclipse conformation, specifically, we're going to eclipse the largest groups. So I'm going to put carbon three there at the center. And carbon four is in the back. And if the eyeball is looking at carbon three, the eyeball sees an ethyl group above its head and the chlorine is going into the page and the hydrogen is going out of the page. Okay, or the hydrogen is to the right of the eyeball, to the right on the Newman projection. So what we can see here is that this ethyl group is anti to the other ethyl group. Okay, or there is a 180 degree like twist between those. And next, uh, the chlorine is coming out of the page or anti to the other chlorine. And the hydrogen is anti to the first. So the least stable conformation is going to be when the largest groups or these ethyl groups that are most electron rich are eclipsing. So I'm going to take what we've drawn above and simply rotate 180 degrees. I'll do a clockwise rotation. So you can do clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm gonna keep the front carbon the same or frozen. So the ethyl group is above the eyeball, the hydrogen's to the right, and the chlorine's to the left, spread out 120 degree angles. Eclipsing or rotating the back carbon 180 is going to place the ethyl groups eclipsed, okay, the chlorine's eclipsed, and the hydrogen's eclipsed. This will be your highest energy confirmation where we have the maximum steric strain because the large ethyl groups and the large chlorines are too close to one another in space or closer than their van der Waals radii allow. Um, and it's the maximum torsional strain where all of those sigma bonds are parallel and eclipsed. Okay, so I've actually already drawn the most stable conformation. The most stable one is a staggered conformation. Specifically, it's gonna be staggered where we have anti-relationships between the large groups, the chlorines, 
and an anti-relationship between the ethyls. All right, so we can see here that those groups, the ethyls and the chlorines, are anti to one another. Or 180 degrees. And this will have not only the minimal steric strain, but it will also have the minimum torsional strain. None of those bonds are eclipsing. So let's look at another example. So here you're given four different conformations of hexane. First, let's name them, right? A is a staggered conformation. The other staggered conformation is C. Those will be the lower energy two. Specifically, C has the large ethyl groups anti, minimizing right, steric strain, while here in the Gauche conformation, or 60 degrees from one another, are the ethyl groups. So the lowest overall energy is staggered anti and then staggered Gauche. The next two will be the eclipse conformations. These are the en energy maxima on the curve that we saw in a previous video. But the eclipse conformations are not identical, right? Here we have a zero degree angle between the ethyls, right? Or we have this ethyl, ethyl eclipsed. Whereas now we have a zero degree angle between the ethyl and the hydrogen. Okay, and the hydrogen is smaller, so the highest amount of steric strain will be present when these largest bulky substituents or ethyl groups are near one another. So the ethyl ethyl eclipse is the energy maximum, and a lower energy but still a maximum on the diagram, right, or transition state is this ethyl hydrogen eclipsed interaction. Okay, so be able to do that, draw Newman projections and then label them according to their stability or energy, right, uh, for any given acyclic compound that exhibits free rotation. Um, so just keep in mind, right, that the lowest energy is synonymous with the most stable. So most molecules of this hexane are going to sit in this anti-conformation. And that is why we draw hexane like this, up, down, up, down, down, right? So we're always staggering each of these bonds or ensuring that all of those are anti in their conformation of carbons relative to one another about a carbon-carbon bond. Of course, the least stable is the highest energy, or the fewest molecules would ever be found in the ethyl ethyl eclipsed. So, for more practice on Newman projections and conformational analysis in general, you can visit Unit 1 of my Orgo 1 course guide at chemguides.com.